Okay, brother. Okay, uh, they just told me that if I push this green button, everything moves forward. So I'm aiming it at all of you and pushing it. Okay, good. That's great. Uh, my name is Bernie Landis. I am the president of Mona Vista Science Advisory Board, and it is the consummation of an extended period of time in the nutrition industry and my proudest moment, I have to say. Uh, I wanted to take you through a little bit of the history of nutrition in our industry because I think it will set the tone for the opportunity that you now have with Monavi. Uh, so let me tell you where I got started 33 years ago. Uh, you heard Dallin talk about his experience with John Wooden. Actually, I used to walk around the track at UCLA with John Wooden every morning. And I know what you're thinking. Yeah, he's probably a basketball player, right? No, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, but John Wooden told me uh, some of the same things he told you. And based on that, I put together a team of natural food companies that organized the first nutritional training table in the history of American college sports. And what that did was it set a tone for a basic foundation of nutrition that carried through most of my career and what we've been able to carry forward here at Monavi. So let me take you back to 1976. 1976, granola in a brown bag was about as sophisticated as the science was in the nutrition industry. Does everybody remember 19? No, I'm probably the only one that goes back that far. You remember 1976? Granola? Okay. Uh, well, <clears throat> it was pretty straightforward. Okay, by 1978, though, things had begun to change, and the United States government began to play a role in what ultimately would become the greatest boom in the science of nutrition, really in the modern era. In 1978, <clears throat> we had three white poisons that everyone was to avoid, and if you were to avoid those poisons, you could do very well and your health would, would move ahead. The white poisons were white flour, white sugar, and salt. And in 1978, the federal government initiated the National Hypertension Control Education Act and told Americans that if they would only not eat salt, then things would get better. So we had a single dimension. Salt was easy. Everybody said, I'll eat less salt and I'll be healthier. Well, we know that that's not quite the whole story. So things moved ahead. Okay, there we go. Uh, by 1986, the government was back at it again. And in 1986, we instituted the National Cholesterol Education Program. And we determined that oat bran was now the new nutritional panacea. If you ate oat bran and soluble fiber, you could lower your cholesterol and you could reduce the risk of heart disease. At that time, I was running a company called Health Valley Foods and we had a very novel question that we wanted to answer about our products. If you put oat bran in our breakfast cereal, what will happen? Will your cholesterol go down or will you just put money in our pockets? So we began a process which is carried forward and is now part of the process with every Mona V product that says, if we have something that we know produces a benefit by itself, will it produce that benefit in the form of the product? Because when you share Mona V Pulse and you share Mona V Active and you share Mona V Immune or EMV, you want to know for sure that it's not the ingredient, it's the product that is delivering the benefits. So that every time somebody drinks Mona V Active, they can be confident that their joint health is going to be supported in a unique and positive way. When they drink immune, they can feel comfortable, not just that there is an ingredient in there that somebody has demonstrated to be effective, but that product in the form, in the bottle that you're sharing with them is going to carry forward the benefit that they are expecting from that product. The same thing with Pulse, the same thing with EMV. My esteemed colleagues who I'll talk to you about before they come out are all world authorities in those specific areas of science that relate to the products that have been developed and that you're now representing. I can tell you without a moment's hesitation that these are the most beneficial nutritional products of any type that have ever been put into the market and the level of science that supports them is unparalleled. Yeah. 
You, you, sh you should cheer. It, it is remarkable. No company has ever done this before, and it is a unique pleasure and opportunity to be in the position of leading the Science Advisory Board because Monavie's support for doing this the right way to make sure that you not only have the world's best business opportunity to change your life, but the best nutritional products to change the lives of those that you work with and introduce the product to is unparalleled. So let's move forward in time a little bit. 1986 goes and 1990 comes and now we're talking about demons. You all remember 1990, fat-free? Life would be great if only we didn't eat fat. It was very simple. Whatever you were doing wrong, if you would eliminate fat from your diet, you could do well. Well, I can tell you that that didn't turn out to be the case. For most people, all that was, was done was the elimination of taste and eating enjoyment. So that didn't last very long at all. <clears throat> yeah, if any of you ever had any Health Valley fat-free cookies, you know what I'm talking about. In fact, <clears throat> it's an interesting point. Health Valley in those years had 37 healthy benefits built into their products. Nabisco, who eventually almost put Health Valley out of business, had only one benefit in their fat-free product. The one that they had that Health Valley didn't have is that it was edible. So <laughs> it, was, it was an issue. So 1996 comes along, and we're pretty well done with the nutritional demon of the day, fat. And now we're back to the next new nutritional panacea, which is soy. Soy solved everything. Soy was the answer to just about every problem that you could have. The problem was that soy wasn't, and <clears throat> so we moved on. You know, now, now that we were done with the, the panacea, we were back to the demons. The year 2000, carbohydrates became the, the great the, the great problem of society. If we could only do away with carbs, we could do away with obesity. Well, that didn't work too well either, and Dr. Atkins sadly passed on, but his company also went into history with a lot of those companies. Now, 2004 comes along, and I'd been doing this for quite a while now, and was now in the consulting capacity. I got a call one day from Jeff Graham, and he said, would you be interesting, interested in going to Brazil? And I said, why? He said, well, we're going to go up the river. I said, well, I don't think I have to go to Brazil to do that. <laughs> he said, no, this is really important because we've discovered a new food that we believe could be the most important new food that has ever been discovered and brought into the American marketplace for the benefit of people's health. So off we went to Brazil.